have a time? Anybody have a time? 30 seconds. I'm gonna get Carly some water. I want it really bad. I want to be Master Chef Canada. The food dream is to own a restaurant, and my 20-year plan is to own a bed and breakfast. How's your sauce doing, girl? Great. Her Got mother, it. Anna, has flown thousands of miles to support her today. Carly works best under pressure. I love you! On a scale of one to 10, my competitive number would be about a 9.5. <sighs> I'm Carly. So what are you cooking for us today? A sage and apple turkey meatball on a parsnip puree with a balsamic reduction. Oh, you got five minutes. Spatula. This is my garlic. This is my oil. Did you apply first thing when you heard about MasterChef? Actually, my mom applied for me. Oh, your mom? <laughs> she flew in from Vancouver, yeah. Wow. Would you have applied yourself? Of course, 100%. Oh, so, Carly. What's the time? Do I have a timer, sir? How bad do you want to win this? I want to win it so bad. <laughs> so bad, I'm on the verge of crazy. Oh. When you cook at home, do you breathe? That's right. Do I have a time? Anybody have a time? 30 seconds. Time. I'm gonna get Carly some water. <laughs> there it is, gentlemen. I'm sweating right. like crazy. Let me tell you, the meatball, perfectly moist, Amazing. well seasoned, Good. puree, smooth. Yes. And the balsamic goes perfectly. Thank you. I can feel your nerves from over there. So what do we have here? That's a parsnip puree, really simple. I just boiled it in the milk and pureed it, seasoned it with a balsam reduction on top. Any special seasoning in the meatball? Um, a special seasoning, yes, my mom's covered. She had this Cajun mix that she gets when she goes That's down. That's the mistake I think I'm getting from this. Oh, is no. that you ended up using a packaged seasoning. Thank you. Thank you. Carly, I like what's on the dish. It's simple. It's a definite yes. Thank you. I thought the dish was a decent dish. I'm concerned about your confidence level in a competition that is going to be extremely fierce. I have to say no. So Carly, I hold that one last vote. That can take you through or send you home. Do you think that you have what it takes to win yes. this competition? Yes. Do you think your mother thinks the Absolutely. same? Absolutely. Why don't you go get her? Bring her out here. I do. Um. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Anna. So Anna? Yeah. I don't think anyone knows your daughter better than you. I love her to be such. <laughs> She's my star. Does Carly have what it takes? Does she have the confidence? Absolutely. She does. Because I believe in her. Anna, can you come up here, please? Oh. <laughs> so, Anna, <laughs> I want you to give this <laughs> to your daughter. <laughs> I'm doing this for us. I'm doing this for this love. I'm doing it for the love. Yeah. And, and for the trophy. <laughs> oh, I am in complete crisis. Julie's making an involtini too, and I'm worried that I'm going to be compared to her. Involtini's an Italian dish, and I'm Italian, so I'm really not worried. Just one burner, one pan, 
and one chicken. Those who make the best chicken dishes will earn a spot in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. The rest will be sent home. This challenge is pretty intimidating. Like, I got nothing to work with. The hell? It's a stress test, and I'm stressed. Having 26 home cooks butchering chickens at the same time is nerve-wracking. I'm chicken parts are flying everywhere. The biggest mistake they can make is trying to cook a whole breast or a whole leg on the bone. It's going to take too long. 100%. I'm making a pan-roasted uh, chicken with a lemon and wine sauce. My biggest fear today is that my chicken will be completely and utterly undercooked. I'm doing a Southwestern-inspired spiced uh, seared chicken breast and, uh, with a little crispy chicken skin that I will attempt. I'm making pan-seared involtini. I'm also serving it with some mixed greens. I am making a chicken madras with a cucumber raita and roti. I'm a little bit worried about time. You have 30 minutes to go! Come on! Feeling the pressure for sure. What's happening here, Eric? This is all you? This whole mess is you? Ah, yes, uh, yes, chef. Wow. I'm not used to working in such a small space. It's pretty disastrous, my station. I'm uh, kneading my dough for my ravioli right now. I'm making a chicken ravioli with a uh, herb cream sauce. OK. Made, wow. made ravioli. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. It'll take a lot of time, though. I, I know, chef. Julie, how are you dealing with the time pressure? I cook at home. Within half an hour, I have dinner ready. So this should be easy, then? Yeah. I am in complete crisis. Julie's making an involtini too, and I'm worried that I'm going to be compared to her. Involtini is an Italian dish, and I'm Italian, so I'm really not worried. You have 10 minutes. Time to panic. Yay! Go, 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 go! Yeah, I'm feeling the pressure. The pressure's on. OK, Alvin, who do you think is looking good? You know, surprisingly, Kayla. Because I'm not seeing a lot of spices. And her dish, I'm seeing spice. It's interesting. I really want to dig into that. Danny is looking great. He's doing a chicken Valencia. It looked very rich and encouraging. I'm concerned about Danielle with her involtini. When she put the chicken into the hot pan, it shrunk and burst on it. I told her about this. You have to tie it up. She says she was going to wrap it in bacon or something like that. You know what Julie did? She did the same dish, but then she skewered it with the rosemary. Yeah. Julie is super cool. Danielle is getting crushed under the pressure. There are a number of dishes that I see that aren't making it to the MasterChef standard. Bubba, a sandwich is just not good enough. Dale, he's doing chopped liver. That's it, it's chopped liver. Just chopped liver just as a MasterChef dish. Nope. Eric, I'm really concerned. He's a bit messy right now. Still, one hour and he pulled off pasta. That's impressive. That's impressive. You know, he hasn't pulled it off yet. <laughs> this test can be won or lost in the final minutes, is my opinion. I agree with you 100%. I fixed my involtini by weighting it down. It's not what I would serve at home, but I did what I could under the condition. One minute, this is your final minute. You better be plating. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Why did they call my name first? I must have really screwed up. Marita. Julie. Megan. I have no idea what to think. Josh. I'm just hoping for the best right now. Who in this group thinks that they have the commitment, the drive, and the talent to move ahead in this competition? Based on this challenge, it is our feeling that all of you are absolutely right. <laughs> My mind is completely blown. We're hugging, we're so emotional, but at the same time, I am eyeing every one of those people up thinking, you are next on my chopping block. Danny, saw you out there, arms folded like this. You're very cool. Always. I see. Is this a joke? I mean, this is MasterChef Canada. And you give me this? In the pantry, Marita was presented with three of our favorite ingredients from the Canadian land, the sea, and sky. The ingredient Marita chose was 
Smelts. <laughs> These home cooks are squirming like little smelts. Smelt. Or is it schmelt? It's even got a dumb name. Smelts. Think, man. Portuguese, fish, so I'm pretty happy. Your 60 minutes starts now. Smelts are they're tiny fish. You don't want to overdo anything to them. I'm going to batter them in some flour. I'm going to fry them nice and crispy, like my mom used to make. One thing you got to be careful, smelt. It doesn't carry a lot of flavor. It's a very mild fish. Yes. Let me guess. Smelts and chorizo. No, no chorizo in this Really? One. You're doing? Smelt croquettes. Is that a Portuguese dish? It usually is done with cod. Figured I'd try a little risk and switch it up. You're pretty confident, aren't you? Absolutely. Danny just threw all his fish into a blender. <laughs> Pureed smelts is a no-no. What do you think of the big concerns here? You know, Danny's making a croquette. I can see the smell. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. And being lost in the potato and the seasoning. I'm in my zone. They're all nervous. Crap, crap, crap. I'm cool as cucumber. What are you making here? I am making smelt and caramelized onion quiche. 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 Megan is a hot mess. I am trying to play cool as a cucumber, but I am freaking out. I think I have schmelz in my hair. <laughs> I do, yeah. What are you making here? Thai curry. Holy shit, that's hot. How much pepper did you use in that? I used half of a scotch bonnet. Yeah. You know how hot that is, right? I made a really stupid mistake. It's way too spicy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to save this. I'm really worried about Megan making a quiche out of smelts. I just can't see that working. It's going to be all steamed, mushy, big mistake. Please, quiche gods, I don't ask for much. <laughs> One minute. Move. Here we go. You should be plating. Finishing touches on those plates, please. Don't even care. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up. Woo! Good job. Danny, please come up here with your dish. What's going on here? She smelled croquettes with chili lime sauce. Where are the smelts? I pureed them and then... You pureed them? Why? Why would you puree a beautiful fish like that and turn it into mush? It's pretty bad. Danny, saw you out there, arms folded like this. You're very cool. Always. I see. Is this a joke? I mean, this is Master Chef Canada. And you give me this? I'm pretty much screwed. I could be going home for croquettes. Megan, can you please come up here with your dish? This is a smelt caramelized onion quiche with mushrooms and asparagus. First thing I would do, get rid of this, you know? I'm puzzled by this entire dish, the size, the presentation, it's just weird. It's very fishy in an unpleasant way. How do you think the egg's going to be? I'm praying. You only have one chance, unfortunately. OK, guys, you need to be rolling out that dough. Not too thick, not too thin. If the uh, pasta dough is too thick, then it's going to be tough. If it's too thin, it won't support all the ingredients that are inside. Look at Kayla. She's got her noodles coming out. I'm telling you, man, it's anyone's game right now. Where's Brooke at right now? She's just doing her filling. Brooke's going to fall out. apart. It's called a pressure test for a reason. So uh, I just got to keep calm and stay focused, and I'll be OK. Medic. 
Why don't she cut herself, too? I cut myself. I am freaking out. She's Brooke's done at this point, for sure. The home cooks are fighting for their lives in the first MasterChef Canada pressure test. You need to be filling your raviolo by now. And Eric needs one perfectly separated egg yolk for his pasta filling. Drain the whites through your fingers. But so far, he's managed to drop them all. Now, he must try and salvage his last intact yolk from his container of discarded shells. Oh, no, it's safe. It's not broken. Oh, yes. There you go, Eric. Beautiful, Eric. Oh, he got it, he got it, he got it. Yeah, he got, he got it, he got one. it. Got one. Have a nice bath. Two minutes. You have two minutes left. Your raviolo should be in the water cooking by now. You should be finishing off your sauce and getting ready to plate. If they overcook the noodle, that means the egg inside will be solid. And that defeats the entire purpose of this dish, because the wow factor lies in that egg being very liquidy. Oh, my God. I wonder how many have actually made a crispy fried sage leaf. Ten, nine, wipe the plate. Seven, wipe the plate. Five, come on, four, three, two, one! Heads up! Heads up! Overall, I'm pretty confident about the pressure test because Kayla's in there. I honestly believe that she'll be the worst. Kayla? Hello, Chef. Nice presentation, and I see you have some shaved Parmigiano on top. Yes, Chef. Well done. How did the crispy sage turn out for you? I get a little crunch. Well done. Let's try the big test. Does that make you happy? That makes me really happy. <laughs> the egg was very nice. So was the pasta. But not bad for a first time out. I can feel that's good pasta. I mean, just with a knife. Gives everything that needs to be in this dish here. Ingredient-wise, yes, chef. Where's the Parmesan cheese? Brooke, how do you feel about your dish? Um, <clears throat> I definitely felt the pressure in that pressure test. So as you can see, I didn't have a chance to get that piece of sage fried. Maybe a little Parmesan cheese missing? How do you think the egg's gonna be? I'm praying. That works. I feel the dough is a little on the thick side, and therefore a tad underdone. Better not dead in there. Less is more. Agreed, Chef. I hope that I can get my nerves under control and show you what I can really do in the kitchen. You only have one chance, unfortunately. It's dead. You know, you're like a roller coaster. You go up, you go down, you go up. This is down. I might be on the chopping block today. Ten seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Yeah. Yeah. Dora, please bring your dish up. So what do we have here? Seared pork chop, cornbread muffin, and a crab apple jelly. Beer, where's the beer? Beer in the sauce, vinaigrette, cornbread. Wow, is this a classic Dora baked good? Try with some of that jelly, it's awesome. This is the jelly? Yes. It's very tasty. Thank you. Let's cook perfectly. I like the whole dish. Thank you.
The sauce you've made has great depth of flavor again. Awesome. Between the apples, the beer, the deglazing of the pan, you've hit wonderful, great notes. Well done. I hope this knife is big enough. I need a bigger fork. <laughs> I tell you, where you come from, everything must be big. Well, I got big appetites out in Alberta. Where I come from, this can feed the whole city. This is Scarborough. <laughs> Shake your hand, that's a good sign. Oh, no, that. okay, don't do that to me. <laughs> Those pork chops are beautiful. Thank you. They're moist, thick, and that's how pork chops should be done. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Christ. <sighs> Pino, please come up. Pork chop, creamy lentil, some pancetta and vegetables, beer, some lemon and parsley. And a little apple compote beside it. This doesn't look like something you would do because the other dishes I've seen from you look very elegant. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. It doesn't taste very good and it looks worse. This borders on prison food. It's sad. You know, you're like a roller coaster. You go up, you go down, you go up. This is down. I might be on the chopping block today. Josh, come on up here. I can smell the beer coming from my plate. It smells pretty good, it looks really good. I hope the judges agree. What is this? Profiteroles infused with the Alexander Keith's Cascade Hop Ale, filled with a goat cheese and mascarpone cream, surrounded by caramelized apples. Wow. Kayla there didn't think you could make dessert. I think that worked to my advantage today. The flavors come together. Apple slightly underdone. Would have removed the peel, but well balanced. She's wrong. <laughs> Thank you, chef. I look up at Kayla. Her bomb did not land today. Eric, please bring up your dish. I'm feeling it for poor Eric. What is on his plate? Eric, tell me about your dish, please. It's an apple pie, beer caramel, seasoned with cinnamon, nutmeg, some beer, honey. Well, the flavors are there in the apple, that's for sure. The pastry, undercooked. Yeah. It's not a great dish, huh? Very disappointed, Chef. Hmm. See all the layers and how flaky that is? Yeah. It takes a lot of experience to try and get that. The only thing you did wrong is you underestimated how long it would take to bake it. Make calculated moves, slow down. Instead of 100 miles an hour, try 90. It's really embarrassing because they think that I'm sloppy and I rush too much. It's just unacceptable for Master Chef. Danielle, would you please come up with your dish? Walk me through your dish, please. Apple and beer glazed pork, and then it's served with a crisp apple and pancetta salad. And I must say, the presentation is very clean. There's a few out there that could learn from that. Thank you. Pork looks like it's cooked rather nicely. A little touch of pink there. Very good flavors. And you deglaze the pan to make a little jus here? Absolutely. Well, there you got the flavor of the hops coming through, and the pork. I'm impressed, Danielle. Thank you. Well done. I'm thrilled that my pork dish is standing out from the rest. Julie, could you bring your dish up, please? <sighs> this is an apple zeppoli with beer in the batter and a 
mascarpone creme anglaise. I find it very dull. We could have done so much more with the apple. You know, every time you come up here, it's an opportunity for you to show what you can do. Suffering from a case of deja vu here, you think you can win this competition cooking donuts? Maybe I can, but that's not my strategy. You can't. We need to see more. Carly, please come up. Oh, my God. My ditch is not what I imagined it to be at the beginning. I am scared I'm going home. Beer and fennel marinated pork chop, beer salad dressing, and browned apples with the celery root puree. The presentation is monochromatic. But I do like the idea of the salad, which has the apple and fennel. The apple stands up very well in that. The beer doesn't come through as strong as I think it should. Not your best efforts, but it is what it is. Your dishes usually have um, a harmony to them. They, everything makes sense. What happened? I didn't have a clear plan. I don't know, I was super flustered. I appreciate the pressure you're under, but ultimately, it all boils down to how you deal with that pressure. I think the pressure got to you here. Danny, would you please bring up your dish? Danny's dish looks like an 80s throwback from like a really bad diner. Beer marinated spicy pork with sour apple slaw, beer, honey, mixed apple chutney. So it's a little spicy and sweet together. So it's a stewed pork dish with a mayonnaise based slaw in the center. I struggle with the two coming together on one plate. It tastes marginally better than it looks. We really need to see that you're not a one-trick pony. I don't think you've done that for us. This is the worst dish I've had so far. Please go back to your station. I should have stepped out of the box and did something else. I screwed up on that. Now we need a moment to discuss. got two right away. I would agree with that. That dish is horrendous. Big disappointment. I have never been at the bottom before. I know I'm going to be in the bottom and probably going home. I still have lots to learn. I don't want to go home. In this elimination challenge, there were two dishes that deeply impressed us. The first dish had a number of well-executed components. That dish belonged to... I want to be a forerunner in this sucker. Good God. Danielle. I stuck to elevated meat and potatoes, and it worked for me. Amazing job, Danielle. Thank you, Chef. But there was another dish that we liked even more. The home cook that made it will, like Danielle, become a team captain in your next team challenge. And that home cook is... Dora. Sweet. Yay. I feel I did step up my game today. I think I scared a few people. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Congratulations, Dora. You've proven that you are one to watch in this competition. Awesome. Now for the bad news. There were three dishes that just didn't cut it. They were bad enough to send at least one of you home. The first dish was made by a home cook who we've come to expect a great deal from. Please step forward. Eric. The second disappointing dish did not do the trick. They're flavors that we've seen from this person again and again. Please step forward, Danny. The third unappealing dish belonged to Pino. Please step forward. 
with the premium ingredients available, you should have created a superb dish. None of you did. Danny, please step forward. The weakest dish in the elimination challenge belonged to you. Please take off your apron. But before you go, we want to thank you for the sincere and powerful flavors you brought to this competition. You stayed true to your roots, and I'm sure you made your father proud. Thank you. It means a lot that my dads could be proud of me. Thanks, guys. I gotta get my cake on this plate, but it's stuck. I mean, the thing is basically frozen to the cake pan. Oh, Damn it, Charles. You just back to let you force it off. 10 seconds remaining. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's going. Nine, eight, seven, okay. six. I push with all my strength. Five, four, three, two. Josh, smash. To be perfectly honest, I'm not a baker and I've never cooked a cheesecake, but I've been on a pressure test before and I've battled my way out of it. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. There is no way that this cheesecake is sending me home today. Absolutely not. You have five minutes before you should have the cheesecakes in the oven baking. Oh, oh, yes. Holy shit. right, guys. Kayla has just pulled out some chocolate. So my concern would be it's starting to get a little too sweet, yeah. too heavy. Everyone else is just going to do their standard cheesecake. And I really think that taking this risk is either going to make me or break me. Okay, it's gone. Listen, I'm making a passion fruit topping. It's going to be unbelievable. You know what I'm interested in is Josh's approach. He has mangoes, he has passion fruit. I think it's going to be interesting what he does. But you know who I'm worried about? Dale. I think Dale's toppings are going to look messy. He's got all these different purees. It's going to look like a mistake. Rum or bourbon? Rum. 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 Stay tropical, man. Heads up. So fancy, Josh. Listen. Listen. Well, he seems to be very relaxed. He's talking to calories. He's talking to everyone. Yeah. Why not cook with fire? Woo! Ah, oh, the flame. Chef. Josh. How are you? I'm great. More importantly, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, actually. I got my passion for going for my topping. It smells amazing. I've kind of been wafting it towards the gallery. I think they appreciate that. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good with this right now. Well, good luck. Appreciate that, Chef. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Finishing touches, tidying up, getting ready to present. I go to pull the spring form, and sure enough, it is stuck to that bad boy. 45 seconds remaining. You need to hustle, hustle, hustle. I got to get my cake on this plate, but it's stuck. I mean, the thing is basically frozen to the cake pan. Oh, Damn it, Charles. You get just your spatula. Let you force it off. 10 seconds remaining. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's going. Nine, eight, seven, okay. six. I push with all my strength. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Oh, God, that was crazy. I'm really worried. I've got a pit in my stomach. Josh's looks the messiest, probably. Half of his cake is still on his plate. I think my cake's a disaster, but Kayla's cake looked like a chocolate cake with a little bit of cheese in it. My cake definitely stands out. That could either be great for me or it could be really, really bad. I'm super stressed out because it doesn't look as pretty as I thought it did, and something as small as that could literally send me home. Wow. Wow. You did a nice marbling effect. You missed a little bit of crust, though. Yes, yeah, Chef. But I give you marks for definitely standing out from everyone else. The only I'm concerned about here is that you didn't really honor the main ingredient, which is cheese. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Well, if different was your goal, you achieved that. In a bad way? In a good way. Thank you, Chef. I think my cake looks the worst, hands down. Josh, would you please bring a cheesecake up? I'm just hoping that the flavors are going to speak for themselves. The judges are going to see that I was trying to be innovative, creative, and take risks. Look, obviously, from its immediate presentation, it's disappointing. The cracks, the way it's slumped, damaged edge. 
It holds well. Very good. Have you made cheesecake before? No, I have not. That passion fruit, it's quite magical. Thank you, Chef. But it still looks disastrous. I agree. The plating wasn't there, but I wanted to be innovative and use flavors that hadn't been done before. And I'm hoping you're going to see that and taste that with my cake today. I can understand that you're hoping that. You think that's innovative? It's inspired by the art we saw yesterday. It's a little postmodern, you know? <laughs> Aside from that, the flavors are where the innovation the is. Flavor. The flavor. Well, what was it? Tropical? Tropical. I Tropical. Want... Absolutely. I think all of my food has been innovative, creative, and delicious. I certainly think this is the same. I think the plating uh, just got away from me in the last minute there. The only thing tropical about this, it's a typhoon hidden. The only thing that can save you right now is how this thing tastes. It's the kind of broth that my mother would say would warm the cockles of your heart. This you learned from your grandfather, you say? Yeah, barbecue pork recipe says. When you see your grandfather next, I'd like you to tell him that he should be very, very proud of his grandson. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done. Thank you, Chef. This next mystery box challenge presents a golden opportunity. Win this mystery box, and you gain control of the competition. Lose, and someone else will have your fate in their hands. I don't want to go home. So if I win this, then I'm automatically safe from elimination. 11 of you stand before us right now. By the end of the day, there will be at least one less home cook in this competition. Those of you left standing will be the top 10 finalists in MasterChef Canada. Top 10 in Canada is huge. Are you kidding me? Top 10 MasterChef Canada? Yeah, that's a big deal. Eric, what would you like to see under that box beside a first aid kit? <laughs> I have, like, so much to prove. The judges are really watching me now. I didn't finish the last mystery box. They think I'm careless. I cut my finger. Ready! I have the mystery box in my fingertips. Something crazy is going to happen. On the count of three. One. This mystery box could have absolutely anything inside. Two. I'm hoping to see my kid, but the box is too small. Three left. <laughs> <laughs> I lift the mystery box, and there's mini Eric. <laughs> oh, look how cute I am. <laughs> oh, hey, it's the prima ballerina. <laughs> I was not expecting to see him underneath this Mr. Box. I'm proud of that 16-year-old in the picture because he was fearless. I came out in a community where people don't come out in. Pino, why are you crying? Just reminds me of my boys. They look a little bit like me. And it's been a while, so I, I miss them a little bit. Sorry. It's, it's not like I left a job. I left my life. I left my world. That's all I know is my boy. Sorry. I just miss them. Tamara, what's going through your mind? Just remembering my dad. He was uh, really big into food and the culinary world, and uh, that's what I'm going to channel for, for today, for sure. They're wonderful emotions. You should embrace it. I'm going to put it into the food today. That's a great strategy. Take a good look at your younger self. What was that dish that triggered your passion for cooking so long ago? We want your photograph to inspire an irresistibly original dish that tells us something about you. Be smart, be innovative, and cook from your heart. But don't spend too much time walking down memory lane. You only have 60 minutes to make your dish. You have full access to the equipment room, but only five minutes in the pantry. Ready! Your 60 minutes starts now! 
So I'm making chasu tongwa, which is pretty much barbecue pork and soup noodles. Ooh. And then I'm gonna make a pork broth with some spinach. I'm making uh, curry shrimp, roti, sliced avocados, and a pepper chutney. Definitely reminds me of my twin sister. You have 30 minutes left. Pino, Pino, what's going on? I'm making some uh, homemade gnocchi, and I have some uh, breaded uh, veal cutlet. Reminds me of my mom. Uh, fettine, we call them, like breaded veal. That's uh, one of our staples as we were kids. I wish I had a mom like that. I ate instant noodles, that's how I ever ate. Good old mac and cheese. Good old mac and cheese, yeah. That was a staple at home, was it? Growing up, my mom raised me, single mom. We didn't have a lot of money. I ate a lot of mac and cheese. <sighs> so yeah, today I'm making a fancy one. So how are you gonna be elevating your mac and cheese? I'm gonna pay homage to my roots and show how far I've come since then. What have you got in there, bay leaf? I've got bay leaf, a touch of tarragon, salt, pepper, and some bacon. That's smart. Thank you. Mm. Got some good flavor there. Thank you, Chef. Just check on the seasoning, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Mike, this looks delicious. Potatoes. Wow. Those are incredible. Thank you. Very nice. What are you making here? Uh, so I've got a braised goat. Wow. I just took the pressure cooker off now. Have you ever used a pressure cooker before? Uh, yeah, just once or twice. Wow. You think this is a little tough? If I were you, I would uh, throw it back this. Yep. That worries me. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the heads up there. Twenty minutes left. You have twenty minutes left. Do you have any flour? Uh, yes. Some um, right there. Right there. Hi, Rick. Hi, Chef. Now this is a typical Chinese kitchen. And then I see, you know, pressure cooker is not used a lot of Chinese cuisine. So what's in the broth? My grandpa always does pork and spinach broth. Well, I never had pork and spinach broth, so that's a very unusual combination for Chinese broth. He always does it, and I love it. Make sure you have my chopsticks ready, okay? Thank you. I'm putting um, the liver um, through the chinoise, so that way it's not grainy. And so when it comes out, it's a nice smooth pate instead of grainy liver pieces. Apple's going to the onions to give a bit of sweetness to the chopped liver? You got it. Okay. And I'm finishing off with a sherry uh, vinegar and some uh, sherry wine. Wow, and the pork. Uh, yeah. I, I like it, lots of alcohol. It's not the homage to your father. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, chef. What are you making here? I am making curry shrimp with roti. Have you cooked with shrimp before? Yes. That's delicious. Wow, that is hot. Yes, I didn't put that much in it. Oh. <laughs> Ten minute time check. Ten minutes remaining. I gotta get some color in here. I gotta get my gnocchi in and into the pan. There's a few things that could go really wrong here. How is Pino's gnocchi? I prefer a bit more sauce, but other than that, I think he's doing well. I can't wait for you guys to try Marita's dish. But it looks like a very small portion, so I hope I'm going first. Pasta, I'm just cutting now. And then I gotta boil it. Oh, man. Yeah, I got a lot to do in a little bit of time. Five minutes left. You have five minutes remaining. Come on. Uncooked. Uh, I'm okay, because it is fairly simple. It all comes together, and then it's just really a couple of bit of blowtorch in after that, and I'm really comfortable with it. <gasps> oh, that was close. One minute! The home cooks have just moments to spare in a mystery box inspired by their childhood photos. Finishing touches should be going on the plate, wiping down, and final checking. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! I'm really happy with how my dish turned out. I'm actually, for once, like, super proud and just super confident with my dish. The judges will now take one last look at the dishes before selecting the three best for tasting. It looks good. I would actually see myself ordering that in a restaurant. The winner of this mystery box will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge that will determine who makes it into the top 10 of MasterChef Canada. They should call me for the top three because the sauce is super tasty and the goat is nice and tender. Today, you were inspired by your childhood memories and there were some great results. The first dish we wanted to see was made by a home cook who wanted to honor their background. 
they made the kind of hearty comfort food that leaves people wanting more. Pino, please bring your dish up. It's a tribute to my mom, my memory as a kid, and it looks perfect and I'm sure it tastes even better. Pino, tell me what the dish is. Growing up, we had so many veal cutlets. Watch my mom make gnocchi. She made everything from scratch. We're Italian, we always made a lot of pastas, and that was one of my favorite things watching her make. The veal scallopini. Lightly breaded, pan fried. Nicely cooked peas, the veal scallopini, seasoned to the tea. Well done, Pino. Thank you very much. Are we gonna be short and sweet? I wish I had your mother too. Thank you very much, Chef. The second person who made it into the top three showcased perfectly cooked protein with gorgeous aromatic sides. Marita, please bring your plate up. While I cook this dish, I put a lot of love into it. I really thought of my family. Curry and seafood is what I grew up on. And it reminded me of my sister because she cooks like a Trinidadian grandma, also like my mom. The avocado, I guess, is uh, designed to cool everything down a bit? Yes, nice and creamy. Hmm. It works. This is, to date, the best dish I've had. It's really, it's incredible. Oh, it's you could have this in a restaurant anywhere. Oh, wow. I want the recipe. Yes. Thank you, sir. I think I should do this the right way, on the roti, right? Yes, that's Which right. Which is nicely done. No forks allowed. No forks allowed, that's right. Oh, I'm in love. Yes. Thank you, chef. It's such a big compliment. The third dish was exactly what we have been waiting for from this home cook. It shows where they're from and what they have learned. And we hope it's the beginning of more great things from this person. Please step forward. Eric. This is absolutely the dish that I'm most proud of. It represents my background, shows my skill, and it, it honors my grandpa fantastically. Eric, what's the inspiration? This is a classic dish my grandpa always made for me, and he's mostly my inspiration. It's uh, cha siu tong mian, which is Chinese barbecue pork soup noodles. Grandpa taught you well. You did all this from scratch in one hour. Yeah. Hosek. Hosek. Goisai. It's the kind of broth that my mother would say would warm the cockles of your heart. This you learned from your grandfather, you say? Yeah. Barbecue pork recipe says. When you see your grandfather next, I'd like you to tell him that he should be very, very proud of his grandson. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. We need a moment to consult. It's great to see some dynamic, fresh flavors. Everything just hit that mark. It was balance, it was technique. I would put them both dishes as equal. So we all agree. Three outstanding dishes inspired by your childhood memories. I want to be Canada's first master chef. Every dish that I put out helps me progress to that. But only one can win this mystery box challenge. I know this is the top dish. It has the flavor, it has the technical difficulty, and it has the innovation. The winner of this challenge the cook that right now has the competitive advantage. I know I did really well. Is it good enough to win? I think so. Is Eric. Thank you so much, chefs. I won the most important challenge in this competition yet, so I'm pretty stoked. Eric, for winning the mystery box, you will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Please follow us into the MasterChef Canada pantry. A little disappointed wasn't me. Obviously, I really wanted to win. But then I look at Eric, and um, he's a great cook.